Hey, what's going on? So today we're talking about vulnerability and how when you're actually able to be truly vulnerable, you grow very quickly in dating. And I want to talk about that because it's it's a very, very, very important topic. And it's a very misunderstood topic, especially amongst men and male culture. Generally, men think vulnerability means that you are a pussy, that you're weak, that you can't handle your emotions, that you're needy and that you're a big baby. And in truth, that's not real vulnerability. That's neediness. Now, what's true vulnerability? Well, it's, it's you as a man being able to authentically speak your truth and not compromise your integrity for anyone else or any desired outcome. It's like when you go online dating, for instance, and you get a girl who asks you, oh, what is it that why you're on here? What are you looking for? And a lot of times guys will lie and fabricate in order to fit the frame of what the girl wants in order to get the girl. Very rarely does a guy actually go in there admitting that he wants a one night stand. He wants friends with benefits. He just wants to hook up, right? Whatever his reason is, maybe he just got out of a relationship. Maybe he doesn't want to have a relationship for whatever out of reason. Maybe that's just the way he rolls. But it's very authentic and it's very attractive when a guy can actually admit that that's what he wants. Now, because he's so honest and authentic in himself, he will lose women because it's very polarizing, right? But that's the nature of polarity. If you're if your goal is to go out and get sex and be able to have one day stands and be able to go out and just have fun and explore and experience sexuality and intimacy with women, and you admit that, you're going to run across girls who are not looking for that. And that's just the nature of the beast, and that's fine. Because you don't want to sacrifice your, your polarizing ability in order to fit the frame of somebody who wants a relationship. Because you're gonna to be totally unhappy when you're not getting what you want first, second date. Now, the truly authentic guy, because he's polarizing, he will at some point run across that girl who's looking for the exact same thing. Maybe she just got out of a relationship. Maybe she doesn't have a desire to be with one person. Maybe she wants to go out there and explore too. And when you find that person, it clicks and it feels so good and so right because you're not having to be, you're not having to beat around the bush. You're not having to lie. You're not having to play this game. And it's very authentic and polarizing. Now, that's true authenticity. That's true vulnerability. You as a man being able to speak your truth about what you want, who you are at your core in the midst or in the face of being judged by someone else, right? Because people will judge you. But the more you stand in your truth, you'll resonate with people who also feel the same way as you feel. And that's more empowering. Now, I want to share with you guys a story about how vulnerability helped me get very comfortable with my sexuality and it made sex immediate for me. Like I'm talking like first day sex, after an approach sex, all that. All right, I'll tell you a story about that in a second. But before we get into that, again, welcome to the channel. I'm glad to have you here. So I'm doing my own thing, but I'm still very much a part of Fearless. I want to make these videos that resonate with you in hopes to help you become a better dater, a better approacher, more confident, more masculine, and just more in tune with who you are as a dude. And I want to do that by posting these videos that teach you everything that I've ever learned from Brian that's excelled me in this work, which all of it pretty much has in different, in different ways. So if you are new to the channel, welcome, hit like and subscribe. Um, I got a ton of videos coming down the pipeline and you would not want to miss them. So I will see you guys in future videos. So the story is this. I was taking a sexual shame workshop with Brian and in that workshop, what he has you do is he has you pull up on the screen what it is that you're most attracted to that turns you on. And I had a specific fetish that I was very shy about that I never really told anyone about. Like this one thing that would always just turn me on and get me excited when I would see it. And I was very nervous to bring it up on the screen. And I remember standing there pulling it up as I'm typing this into the browser to pull it up on the screen. Just my body shaking and, and uncontrollably because I was so nervous and I was so worried about being judged by the models, the, uh, the students who were also in the workshop, Brian. And um, I pulled it up and I, sit, I stood there. I shook, I shook, I shook uncontrollably. And my heart started to want to close off because, um, again, I was just kind of like, this is not going to be well accepted. It's embarrassing. They're going to laugh at me. They're going to make fun of me. And um, yeah, it just didn't feel like I was ready for it. So I pulled it up on the screen and I'm standing there and I'm shaking and I'm wondering what they think about what I just showed them. 
And so in that moment, that was true vulnerability, right? Me really exposing myself in that way that um, made me drop all my guards. This is what I like. This is what I'm interested in. Now everybody can see it. And I remember just feeling so vulnerable. But at the time, I didn't take or see vulnerability as a good thing. Actually, I saw vulnerability as a very scary thing. Um, I didn't have that correlation with it being a positive thing until later. Um, so I stood there. Brian uh, was totally cool about it. The models were totally cool about it. Students also totally cool about it. And one thing I noticed from doing that was I had a major release. I had a huge release. And what I noticed from that was when I left that workshop, the thing that changed was all of a sudden I was becoming unapologetic about liking that fetish, that particular thing. And so immediately when I would see it out in the world, I would just go talk to the girl about it like right away. And um, it made things very sexual right away. It made things very interesting right away. Girls would flirt right away. And it was just awesome. So I have the story that probably a week or two later after that workshop, we had gone to Romania. And I remember um, I met a dating coach there, um, just someone I randomly met out in the street. And we were hanging out for a little bit. And then we uh, went to my place to hang out. Then we left. So probably about 10 minutes away from my place is a, um, a little wine bar. And there was this beautiful Romanian girl sitting at this wine bar. She was sexy. And I remember, so we both looked at each other, me and the guy, and we went over there to talk to her. So we hung out for a little bit. He had to go because he had to go meet somebody. But um, I stayed and I chatted with this girl for a little bit. And I kid you not, maybe like five or 10 minutes into the conversation, I'm already talking about this thing that I like. And I'll tell you guys what it is. <laughs> I have a foot fetish. Right. And specifically for women who wear gorgeous sandals, keep their toes pedicure and it looks awesome. And so that's my kink. It just absolutely turns me on when I see it and um, it lights me up. And so I noticed that she was wearing sandals and she had a really cure, a uh, really cute pedicure. Like she totally took care of her feet. So I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's my cup of tea. <laughs> so uh, I just called it out. I was like, Jesus Christ, like your feet are sexy. And she uh, smiled and giggled and laughed. And then she came across the table and sat next to me, put them up on my lap and asked me if I wanted to play with them. And I was like shy, like the shy little boy smile <laughs> like this. And I was like, hell yeah. So I started playing with them. And I kid you not, we were there for another five or 10 minutes. And uh, she was getting turned on. I was getting turned on. The more turned on I got, the more turned on she got. The conversation completely turned to being about sex and what she liked sexually. I learned a lot about what she liked sexually. We get up from there and we walk back to my place and we just go at each other hard. We're just going at it. All that like, maybe within like 30 minutes of meeting this girl. So I say all that to say that your vulnerability can absolutely accelerate your growth, especially in the area of being more confident being more confident in who you are, being more real about who you are, being more real about what you like, what you don't like. And because you'll start speaking your truth more to women, women really get an idea of who you are. And a lot of women love guys who are vulnerable and honest like that. So I hope my story uh, helps you uh, when it comes to vulnerability and um, helps you lean more towards being vulnerable openly so that you guys can start to reap the benefits of that. So anyways, guys, um, post in the comments if uh, this helps you guys, if you want to see more content on this particular topic. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Remember, only the confident really love. Peace.